I started to have some clicking noises from the back ends of my 1991 coupe and um, jacked it up and found that I had some play in the drive line and further investigation revealed that uh, I had a bad U-joint on the passenger side half shaft. I've already replaced that, kind of solved the problem, but I'm going to go ahead and go after the driver's side half shaft U-joints now and I thought maybe I'd do a little video to uh, help some of my Corvette buddies out. Right now I've got the uh, car jacked up. I'm ready to pull the wheel off the left side and go after it. I won't go into jacking up a Corvette. Uh, there's lots of ways to do it. Right now I'm kind of on ramps on the front end and, and I've got the back end supported by jack stands and the rear wheels are about four to five inches off the floor. That gave me plenty of room to, before to uh, do my work. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the wheel and uh, get a work mat underneath the back end. There are, I'm sure, several different ways to do this job. Um, the way that I'm going to do it this particular time is to uh, leave the wheel hub in place. I'm going to disconnect this lower control arm, probably both places, because I found out if I just uh, disconnected up here at the camber nut, and when I go to put it back together, I had to actually unbolt it down here as well. So I think I'm just gonna take it totally out. This uh, bolt that connects the leaf spring needs to be removed, tapped back up and out of the way. And then this uh, piece up here, looks like a tie rod end or whatever it is, that needs to come out as well. Once that's done, you can uh, take the straps off of the U-joints and go ahead and pull the axle or the half shaft out. Again, there are often a lot of different ways to do things. And to remove this tie rod end right here, um, they actually make a fork shaped tool that you would put in this area and drive it in there as a wedge and pop it loose. You risk damaging the uh, rubber seal when you do that. Instead, I don't have one of those, so I've got a heavy piece of metal. It's actually an old piece of railroad tie that I took a, a shaper when I was going to college machine shop class and uh, shaped it with some sharp edges on it. So what I did is I took that heavy weight and set it right about there. And then I took the nut right there and I ran it down to just below the stud and gave it uh, three good taps with a hammer and on the fourth tap it popped loose so that worked fairly well for me I don't believe I've damaged the stud at all and more importantly haven't damaged the rubber seal that's right up in there either with a tool that's made to do that. Another thing I should have said before I took this apart was uh, there was a bolt coming through the leaf spring and I counted the number of threads on that uh, bolt that was sticking below the nut so that I could put it back together and that's important so that we get it back to where it used to be. I took this bolt out. I'm hoping that I don't have to take that camera adjustment bolt out up there. Well, this is the tool I'm going to use to get those U-joint uh, 5 16 strap bolts out. And it's a 12 inch extension with a wobble end on it so that this has got a little bit of flexibility. A 5 16 inch uh, 3 8 drive socket, a 6 inch extension, a 3 inch extension a long ratchet. And what I'm doing is going after those bolts on that U-joint in there. And I've already tried it and it works well. It's got them broken loose. And uh, I'm actually able to reach all the way in there and uh, operate the ratchet from the wheel well area. So it works pretty good to go after the U-joint uh, strap bolts by the uh, differential. Now we're gonna go after the ones that are at the uh, hub end. And to do that, you gotta, gotta get underneath the car a little bit. That's where having good jack stands kind of pays off well. And uh, you can see I've got the ratchet in place, a six inch, inch extension and the uh, 5 16 socket on it. And uh, you're going, gonna kind of go back into a place that's not uh, quite so accessible, but uh, we'll go ahead and take those strap bolts out and the straps as well. The way the rear wheel works on a C4 Corvette as far as alignment goes and positioning, it's actually held in position by uh, a three-legged stool, I'll call it. One would be that tie rod end. That, there's the tie rod and that's where it went. The leaf spring is somewhat of a flexible connection. 
we've got the lower control arm that I've got to bolt out and I can actually push that down now. And uh, once, once you do that, you can see the whole hub move then. Um, the third leg of the stool, so to speak, is the half shaft itself. So to get the half shaft out, you've got to create some separation from the, uh, or outward movement, if that makes any sense. And uh, you can see once, once it's done, you can actually move that hub out. Having another pair of hands would work well. Um, for it's 1991. It has about 132,000 miles on it right now. And I repainted it a couple of years ago, and I love the car. I really do. It's a lot of fun to drive. It's just a daily driver for me, really, though. Um, I'm 45 minutes into this, and that's even with stopping and do a little video every now and then. So I got the half shaft out of the car now. And uh, the other one that I replaced, I think the, the U joints were original to the car. They did not have a grease circ like this one does. And this is the bearing cap, it's hard to see in there, but the needle bearings on this one aren't too bad. Um, so this U joint was still serviceable, um, but I didn't know that without turning it apart since I'm probably the fourth or fifth owner of the car. And I like to, if I'm gonna replace one side U joints, I wanna replace them both. Eventually I wanna go after the main drive shaft and do that as well. Um, so anyway, just thought I'd show that to you. And I've got a dissimilar parts between one side of the car and the other. When I get done, I'll have a, a full rear axle with Moog uh, U-joints in it. Well, if you read the forum, you'll find there's probably as many different ways to get a U-joint out of a shaft as a guy can come up with. Some people will tell you to take a cutting torch and just cut the uh, center out, and then you're driving out one bearing cap at a time. And other people will say, use an arbor press and press it out. Well, I don't have either one of those with me, although I do have them both back at my shop. Uh, what I'm gonna do is use an oversized socket on the bottom and use an undersized socket on the top and several good wax and I'll have it apart. If you're gonna do that, you wanna make sure you have good backup on the bottom and you wanna make sure that this socket is square against the yoke so that you don't uh, damage the yoke. Well, the first one came apart really easy about three good wax and it was out um, so you can fiddle around with a cutting torch or a grinder or anything else to uh, make the job easier would have been a waste of time so i thought i'd go ahead and get this second one set up and just show you how it goes okay so three light blows really once that's done you grab the bearing cap that's now driven through the yoke and I'm having a little bit of a hard time getting that off there it comes so once once that's done pull the other bearing cap and uh, so at that point the half shaft is completely broken down now it's time to do a lot of parts cleaning so uh, we'll pick up the video a little bit later on when we put things back together So I've been cleaning parts here probably for the past half hour, 45 minutes. Uh, you need to clean things up so you can ins inspect them. When I got to looking at the yoke, I could see where uh, there was one place in here where it had been uh, nicked and dented a little bit from whoever did the replacement before. So I took a uh, chainsaw file and dressed that out. I took a little bit of a brace of cloth and cleaned the inside of it out. I've got uh, the snap rings in one side of the yoke and uh, one side only that's how we'll reassemble it and I've got the bolts and the bearing caps uh, not the bearing caps but the straps cleaned up ready to go in one thing I wish that I had just bought new straps one thing too I'd say is why good quality U joints these are Moog brand unfortunately they're made in Mexico right now but I'm hoping their standards are still good Moog and Spicer I think are probably two of the better ones um, I'd steer clear of the ones that were made in China. So you see a lot of different uh, ways to put these together. The ideal way would probably be using an arbor press that's pretty controllable. But I'm uh, away from home now and I don't have those nice tools. What I do have is a 4-inch uh, C-clamp that's clamped in place with a uh, drill press vise. And I've got the uh, clip in one end. And what I'm going to do is take 
one of the uh, bearing caps off the U-joint. Do that kind of carefully so you don't dislodge any of the little needle bearings inside. If you dislodge them and get them out of position, then it's not going to go together very well. And uh, the end with a clip down there is the end that you're going to force the new U-joint uh, into. get lined up on the bottom. Take one final look at the cap bearing, put it into position, and then get things lined up in the C-clamp, get everything squared up so both ends of the yoke are square on the uh, bearing surfaces, both there and there. And then I also shot just a little bit of WD-40 in on the interface of the yoke there. And the bearing really installs fairly easily once that's done. Well, the reason you take the leaf spring loose, this lower control arm loose, and the tie rod end that goes up in here loose is because in order to get the, the uh, half shaft out, you've actually got to pull the hub assembly out. You can see that moves pretty good. And uh, I want to get that out of the way so that I really replace it with a bottle jack right underneath this part of the wheel hub and that tended to force the hub out and I was able to put the half shaft back in no problem at all so I'll crawl underneath the car and get it lined up and then just let the bottle jack down and that'll put the uh, half shaft right where it needs to be and I liked doing it that way the factory service manual actually says take this lower control arm off up at the camber adjustment point, which means you'd have to be careful about getting the camber bolt back in there at the right place. This way I took this loose out here and was able to put the half shaft in place without ever uh, messing around with the camber. So I've got the half shaft in position now and uh, everything's lined up well. You can see that. A little dab of Loctite on my cleaned up uh, bearing cap bolts and clean those up as best I could. I kind of wish now that I'd bought new parts, but uh, on the 130,000 mile Corvette, probably be okay. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and uh, bolt the uh, U-joints into place. Well, this pretty much completes the uh, half shaft U-joint installation video. The only thing left to do is... Uh, put the wheel back on, get it down off the jacks. I think you guys can all figure that stuff out anyway. One thing I can't remember if I told you up front or not, but uh, remember to count the number of threads on this uh, bolt to the leaf spring so that your ride height stays the same. Uh, eight threads on this one. I took the lower control arm off here and had good luck getting the half shaft out and back in. In fact, the service manual says, take it out over here. There's a camber bolt there, and if you're gonna do that, remember to put a scribe mark or something there so that you know how to get the uh, camber set right, otherwise you get it all back together, you'd have to take it to a shop to get lined up. So, that is it.